take a look at today's project. Yes, it is soil, uh, wet soil from the garden that we'll be using today. Today I'd like to make some sort of a uh, soil moisture sensor, much like this one, except we're going to go a lot farther. I'd like it to be uh, connected using an ESP32 to stream data up to the cloud for monitoring. I wanted to do something a little different this time instead of two metal probes coming off to measure soil resistance because those probes uh, always degrade over time and um, I had uh, previously purchased but not really used this capacitive soil moisture sensor made by DF Robot and the project came back into my mind when a uh, co-worker brought in one of these that he had picked up at AliExpress and this is a much cheaper model much less expensive let's look at those now here's the DF robot capacitive soil sensor for thirteen dollars and that price wouldn't matter too much if I wanted to make one but if I want to make ten of these or more then that's going to be a significant cost and these uh, similar models have come out and are available on places like AliExpress for much less, here's a dollar twenty-nine, so one tenth of the price. Now, with that though, you're going to have to wait thirty to fifty days to get it. If you're willing to go a little higher price and go for a ten pack, here's a ten pack for fifteen dollars, and you can get it in a much more reasonable ten to twelve to twenty days. But maybe, and and I'll probably order this, but maybe I can come up with something even different. Let's take a look at how these capacitive soil sensors work and see if these are identical in function or or not. So here we have the DF robot sensor connected up to the meter and the blue wire here is the analog output and the, the, the device runs on three, three and a half volts, that range. It's actually a pretty wide supply range, I believe. Now, without any anything on it, it's uh, reading 2.6 volts. We put it in the water and it goes up to, or rather it drops to uh, 1.3 volts, which is pretty good. So a fairly wide range there. One of the other things you might notice is if I just put my hand on it, it drops. So these are just using these copper traces underneath the solder mask to, as a capacitor, and that alters the free running oscillator, which in this case is just a 555, and changes the voltage output. Now, uh, Andreas Spies, uh, he's from Switzerland, he, his channel, he did a couple of, he did a video on, on these and dug into how they work. Let's just do a quick look at it, at uh, one of the aspects of how these work. Here we have the board and the scope and if we probe this connection out to the center we can see on the scope the waveform that we get when uh, we're we can see the waveform and if we touch the sensor we can see the waveform change significantly in fact we're running it's running an oscillator at uh, 481 kilohertz so pretty pretty good speed on that free running oscillator and it clearly works quite well as a uh, touch sensor or moisture sensor. Let's look at the cheaper m model from uh, AliExpress and see if that works this exactly the same way. Let's see, there's the center contact right there and I see a diode connecting to it. That might, yep, there we go, that's the right spot. Now we touch it. Oh yeah, it really fades out. So uh, these, that's how these work. That capacitive coupling causes the oscillator to change, and then that goes in. That output goes into a capacitor out here, and that then comes out on the analog, on the analog output wire right here. Now it would be interesting uh, to make maybe if I made my own capacitive sensing board. So I did that sort of. I took a simple piece of single-sided circuit board and dremeled out the uh, a, a wide path between these two, similar in width I thought to uh, what was on these. And then I did a uh, solder mask on it. This is a homemade, this is just a cheap 
uh, liquid solder mask UV cure. I did then uh, glue, put some clear glue around the edges of the board just to make it a little more uh, waterproof and uh, cut, in, cut down on the permeability of that. And I uh, hooked up a couple of pins to it. And I wanted to see if I could do something similar. And I had a, uh, forgotten I had already had another one of these DF robot ones. Let's measure the capacitance of these traces. To do that, we have to get rid of the con components off the board. So here I'm just going to use the hot air gun and scrape them right off. Now, let's get our meter. Go over to capacitance. And hopefully these the length of these wires won't skew things. Oh, I did make one extra change. I had to, on here, solder one jumper in to connect this trace, this center uh, trace, out to the blue analog output wire. All right, we're stabilized at uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.03 nanofarads. Now if I put my hand on it, it jumps rapidly to uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.16. So that's a pretty, pretty solid reading. Now let's look at the junky little board that I did. We're at 0.06. Touch it. This meter responds pretty slowly to things. Okay, we're getting some reading here. 0 0.8, 0 0.08. So we got a bit of change. And I thought, well, this seems a lot like a feature that's built in to an ESP32, which is capacitive touch sense. So here in the ESP32 data sheet, um, we can see there are a bunch of touch pins, several of them. In fact, there's 10 of them, 0 through 9. A little more obvious right here. They're called out in, oh, call it pink-ish color on this data sheet. So there's six on this side and four over here on the lower right. So let's try using those and see if we can use those as a water sensor. So we have a bunch of stuff hooked up to this uh, ESP32 dev board. Uh, we've got the cheap AliExpress one that is hooked up to pin 35 and then the DF robot sensor hooked up to analog input on pin 32. My, then we have my cheap homemade board hooked up to the touch sense on pin 14 and the old DF robot one with the components all stripped off of it is hooked up to uh, touch sense on pin 12. Now let's take a look at that signal coming off the ESP32 touch sense pin. And it's 60 hertz at 760 millivolts peak to peak. Interesting that they're using uh, 60 hertz, but uh, maybe that makes sense. So very different than the uh, one megahertz that we had coming off of, or, or half a megahertz, sorry, coming off the DF robot. And uh, what was the AliExpress was, uh, the AliExpress board was uh, one and a half megahertz that it used. Let's see if 60 hertz will work for this. Here we have a simple program running in the Mongoose OS uh, browser. Uh, not much happening in here. Uh, loading a few basic files. This is based upon one of the one of their examples that I just took and modified a little bit. We set up the uh, pin for the DF robot and the AliExpress boards. We set up uh, yeah, enable those. Set up the two touch pins. 14 and 12. Set the touchpad voltage and such. That was all default from a touchpad example. And then down in here, all we're doing is every second is sampling the inputs. We're going to read the robot, the uh, DF robot pin, the ADC, the touchpads, and we're going to 
create a JSON string. So this will publish messages up to uh, the Amazon uh, MQTT uh, queue. And let's take a look at that. All right, we're subscribed to the topic. The messages are coming up every second. We can see the two touch sensors and the uh, two, the AliExpress and the DF robot, and the, of uh, course, a message ID incrementing each time. Now what we need to do is start testing these by putting them in the water. So let's do our uh, AliExpress, let's do the uh, capacitive one from uh, DF robot first. Okay, the DF robot just dropped uh, down to 1600. In fact, we can do the AliExpress one at the same time. And we can see that we've got uh, DF robot is down at uh, 1400, and AliExpress is at 1800, 1600. These, these have uh, capacitors that have to discharge. They're dropping quite a little bit as uh, as they detect the moisture. Should probably just leave those in. Let's try the homemade board. All right, that is touch one, and it is down to 1800. And now it's back up to 57, 5800. So that's a pretty big drop. About 4,000 counts came off of it. And now the uh, depopulated uh, DF robot board. I put that in just like the others. It's down to 632. Wow. So it went from 4,200 or so down to 600. So we're getting a really good good reading here. Um, and is it even uh, variable? If I drop it in just a, a little ways, do I get a little bit of signal? I do. Get a little bit of drop. 1600. 1600. Yeah. So it is variable. So at least as a water sensor, this will definitely work. Now with damp soil, let's put in the uh, AliExpress. Try to put these in at the same distance out. DF robot. Give each one a little bit of a press on the soil. Now the modified DF robot as a touch sensor. Oh, I put it in backwards. Facing the same direction. And the little home board. All right. And they both, they all dropped. Now the uh, AliExpress board seems to have dropped a lot. Oh yeah, one of the pins has popped loose. I hate about these uh, DuPont connectors. One thing I can count on is that I can't count on them. All right, so now we can see that we have pretty good readings here. Uh, very stable. DF, the uh, DF robot is 2100. AliExpress with wet soil is 1400. The two touch ones are at 23, 2400, and 1800. Well, I think we have a pretty successful run uh, using the uh, DF robot or AliExpress capacitive moisture sensor to uh, analog output. Or you can make your own little board and uh, connect it to the ESP32's uh, touch pins. I hope that was useful. There I'll, I'll get the code uh, published out to uh, GitHub as soon as I can. And I hope that was interesting.